So now we're on part two of this blog. We talked about what happens when we get out of fellowship with God. Blog topic five, our vertical relationship affects our horizontal relationships. And uh, it results in sin. It separates us from God, and we go down the tubes. But we know I start all my videos with getting into the Holy Spirit, going with the flow. Hands are getting a little cold tonight. Man, it's been a long day, so a little bit stiff over here. So how do we get back into fellowship with God? We saw, we saw what happens, you know. Sin just takes over, consumes our life. Um, and it just destroys our life. It steals from us, it destroys from us, and it ultimately wants to kill us. This is all Satan's MO, his agenda. By, do we do it by trying harder with our might and power, right? Flesh to obey God's law of commandments expressed. I have pages, so you want to go out to the page that I sent. I have a link to this page because it has all the information. To this law of commandments expressed in ordinances, right? Is this how we do it? Climbing up the rungs of the ladder? That's what most religions do. The, quite, the answer is no. That's, that's Old Testament religion and every religion on the planet. That's every religion, every religion you'll see. This is what we got to do for God. We got to do for God. And every religion on the planet. It's all about work, 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 work. Do, 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 do. Climbing up the rungs of a ladder to reach God, to please Him. Paul says, Now the law came in. Why did it come in? To increase or multiply the trespasses. The word trespass means to fall away from. What God has intended. Falling away. And it increases it. You just fall away even more. So that's what the law came in for. Since through the realizing channel of the law. The genuine. Here it is. Full. Experiential. Relational. Epinosis. Knowledge of sin. Right? This is what comes. Through the channel of the law. Is the genuine, full, experiential, relational knowledge of sin. So if you want to really know all about sin, just get into the law, man. Just get into the law. That's the word dia. So in other words, this is really bad news. The law, the Old Testament, which is 97.4% of the Old Testament, right, is the law. It wasn't meant to stop sin, but brings us into the experience of even more sin. That's why it's called the law of sin and death. Paul says, hey, this is the law of sin and death. The law was added for the sake or cause of transgressions. So it was added because of or the sake of transgressions from specific commandments, right? <clears throat> but it was only for a period of time. It says until the offspring should come. Until the offspring, and guess what? That is singular. Who is the singular? In the context, it's Jesus Christ. And it says, should come. To whom the promise had been made. That's the promise, the promise of Abraham. Uh, right? That was to Abraham... About uh, it, but about blessing Abraham. He 
his coming inheritance. So, you know, there was a promise made to Abraham about his coming inheritance, but it was to a singular offspring. It wasn't every one of us. A lot of people think it was everyone. No, it was to Jesus. Has been made. Paul says the offspring is Jesus Christ. That's what he says. The Old Testament law was our legal appointed pedagogist, which is a child educator, superintendent, guardian. And it says only until Christ came. In order that now we might be justified or made just, made righteous. Not then, but now <laughs> made righteous by trusting, relying faith. But now that trusting, relying faith has come. We are no longer, I should just, I'm going to cap all that. We are no longer, in fact, under a pedagogus, but are sons of God. See, that guardian was like a slave owner. As he says, those kids were like slaves. That's what the law was. The slave owner, right? Is a guardian. He even, he even talks, he uses words like prison guard, right? In other words, in other places, he says prison guard. It, the, it imprisoned us. The law, the whole Old Testament scripture imprisoned us. Yeah, the, all the scripture imprisoned us. Paul clarifies our sonship. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now, that Greek word there for sons is not talking about these little children. It's this word, mature sons. They are the ones that get the inheritance. They are mature sons. So I have some notes for that. So you can see, it's not talking about these little children. It's the people, it's the sons, right? We, we should be grown up. When Christ came, we are now considered grown-ups. And he's going to give us our inheritance. And the Holy Spirit's the first fruits of our inheritance. He says, our inheritance we can claim only when we are free, mature sons. Right? Why are they not free when they're little children? It says, uh, you'll see why. Didn't come by the slave children under the law, son Ship inheritance only came through Jesus as the meteor of a new covenant. And uh, these educators, pedagogists, child educators, superintendent guardians, right? Um, that treated the children as slaves, no different than slaves and it's they were really strict right they were really strict they treat them no different than slaves oh wow they were strict that's what they were they're really strict they were they were not nice <laughs> these are like the, my old Catholic nuns when I went to Catholic school. Bam! These are not nice people. There is not a, the Holy Spirit is not in a lot of these people. Our inheritance we can claim only when we are free, right? Sonship inheritance only came through Jesus as the mediator of a new covenant. That's what it says. So how do we get back into fellowship with God? It says by meno abiding or remaining in Christ. We got to get back to being connected, remaining connected. That's the only way. Remaining connected to in Christ. We have to be in Christ. You have to be inside Him. And how do you do that? By trusting, relying faith. And that word is pistis. It's pistis by trusting, relying. Pistis faith. And we know that pistis is a relationship word, right? It's a relationship word. It's not a head, it's not a theological word, it's not a mental assent to a thing, but it's a relationship word 
of trust and dependence, right? Trusting, relying, pistis faith. With people, not objects. <coughs> you can go to that page if you want. John warns the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born or begotten out of God ongoingly sins, right? Present, it is not, they're not going to ongoingly sin. Now, where does he say this? 1 John 3, let's go look at this. Let's, I bet it's not even ongoing. I bet it's habitually. 1 John 3, 8. He says, the devil has been sinning from the beginning. And so he's just going to continue sinning. That's why the, the, that, that the, Jesus was revealed. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He's been sinning from the beginning. The one who practices... Anyone who's been born again, sin does not practice because the seed of him, and this word is poeo. So this word is in the present, ongoingly, and active, actual. So they're actually doing this, and they're uh, presently, any born one ongoingly, uh, presently, ongoingly, uh, makes to do, uh, does, does, but makes to do, I make, manufactures, constructions, makes, uh, causes, or does, right, it's the same word, poiemo, poio, poio, p-o-i-e-o, so he says, no one who does this, Let's see what he says here. Let's get this right. We want to look at the Bible hub. The one is not pra does does sin. So it's sin, and that's singular. So he says, no one begotten or born out of God ongoingly makes or causes or does sin. Because God's sperma seed which is the life of the Holy Spirit, right? Ongoingly remains in. It's really, it's talking about Christ as the life of the Holy Spirit. That's sperm, where we get, you know, sperm. He says, Christ is the life of the Holy Spirit. Ongoingly remains, there's that meno. Menos, meno remains or dwells same thing, remains connected to, or dwells, right? So we have to dwell in Christ, but here he says, it dwells in him, it dwells in the person, right? It dwells in him. So, it, and so he cannot, in fact, he cannot, he can, absolutely in fact, not, See, he can absolutely, in fact, not ongoingly. Now it says he is unable, right? That's that word. He's, he is unable. He is dunamis, uh, powerfully enabled. So he is, so he is, so he it ongoingly is powerfully enabled, absolutely not, okay, he's not powerfully enabled, okay, now we're going to see what this means, is powerfully enabled, this is that dunamis, Yep, dunamis, dunamis, and this is reflexive, so within, not powerful enough within, absolutely in fact not, uh, he is not 
to what? Continue, ongoingly continue sinning. Harmartia, yeah. To and and it's it's infinitive to to sin to ongoingly sin. We know that everyone who has been born or begotten out of God does not, in fact, ongoingly sin. Because the seed has remained in him. Let's see what verse 10 says. <coughs> okay, it says, so anyone who is having been born of God, right, Ongoingly, not, absolutely in fact, not, ongoingly makes sin. No one, anyone, it says anyone having been born of God, it's anyone, haha, <laughs> anyone born or begotten out of God. Absolutely fact not see I'm having to fix this because the English Standard Version is not right and that's that's one of the best Bibles there is and I'm having to fix it that's terrible because the Greek says uh, having been born of God and it's a perfect de tense having already been born already been with ongoing results. So this is something that's happened in the past when they became Christians, been born or gone out. Absolutely, in fact, not ongoingly uh, makes or causes or does sin. And the reason why is because God's seed um, remains in him. Ongoingly remains or dwells in him. And then it says, in him, and thus, he's not able, that's third, yep, and thus, and thus, that's the word, and thus, is a, it's a conjunction, thus, he, ongoingly, dunamis, dunamis is powerfully enabled, he is not, <laughs> he is absolutely in fact, not ongoingly, powerfully enabled uh, within to ongoingly sin. So there is a power inside of us. The Holy Spirit is just saying, I'm not going to let you do this for the rest of your life. You're mine. That seed will not allow you to continue to sin. And then he says, we know that everyone who has been born of, out from God, where does it say this? Oh, in verse 5, 18, yeah, that's what he says, 1 John 5, 18. So this is much further down in the passage. He just wants to reiterate, he says, we know that everyone, we know that everyone who his, has already been, that's it, having already been with ongoing results, uh, who, having already been with ongoing born or out from God, it says, absolutely in fact, absolutely in fact, it says, uh, absolutely, that's the first thing he says, absolutely in fact, not continues uh, ongoingly continues right, ongoingly sins that's all he says continue, ongoingly sins and then he says and the reason being 
and why this is impossible. But instead, the one who who now he uses uh, having been begotten of God, aorist, one who definitively or holy says, so "Hey, man, this I'm talking about. This is the real thing, right?" And it's a participle. It's aorist already, already, right? It's the aorist participle. Wow, that's a different. That's different than the perfect participle. Oh, already, uh, one who already has been definitively holy. That's really stressing this. I mean, I'm really saying this is done. This has been done. Right? Uh, been born. It's passive. Out of God. Right? Protects him. The one. Instead of the one. And that's Christ. Ah, see, Christ was. Christ was already, see, Christ was definitively born or begotten out of God. He protects, right? He protects him, this person, and thus, or and so, the evil one, it says, does not, does not, or absolutely, in fact, does not, absolutely, in fact, not touch to modify. That's the word touch. He, he, you know, he's in touch in order to change or modify. So, you know, Satan can't change where we're at. He can't change who we are. We are children of God. He cannot change this. He's not allowed to do this because the one, Christ, who has already been definitively holy, been born or begotten out of God, he is Christ, right? He protects this person, and thus the evil one does not, does absolutely in fact not. Does absolutely in not fact, fact not. Does absolutely in fact not. <clears throat> wow, isn't that awesome? That's talk about, you know, keeping us. Paul warns about sin. He warns us about sin. He says, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord actually definitively holy. That's the aorist. Definitively holy. Just get it done. Experientially, relationally. Gnosko knows, he knows who are his. The Lord does this, right? And coupled, everyone who confesses, and guess what? That was public. Confession, go look at the confession um, page. It always con was public. And what did, where did that happen? It was publicly at their water baptism. That's where it was. And you can go look at the confession page, uh, the surrender page. And so you can see that this was everyone who calls or confesses on the name or the authority. Uh, Jesus is Lord, right? That's what it was. Must depart. He's talking to Christians who all got water baptized, who confess Jesus is Lord. Lord means what? It means, it means master owner. Now the Lord owns us. Must depart or stand off or withdraw or desist from injustice or unrighteousness. And that is in 2 Timothy 2.19. So when we look at that in the, 
Bible Hub, and we'll just make sure it talks about iniquity. This is Adakia, 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 from Adakia, A-D-I-K-I-A, Adakia. That's the Greek word. So catch this mental picture. I don't know what your Bible says, but it means it's the opposite of justice. So it's injustice. It's unrighteousness as a violation of God's standards of justice, right? His standards, which brings this divine disapproval. It's a violation of God's justice, what is contrary to his righteous judgments, right? So from, so you must depart from injustice or unrighteousness or all that departs from God's righteous judgments. And what are they? <laughs> About sin. He tells you what, what sin is. He tells them. He tells us. He tells us what is an unjust. You know, all the crooked stuff that is going on. Crooked. Crooked is unjust as it can be. Favoritism, showing favoritism to everybody, or to all their buddies, their cronies, and uh, showing partiality, and and not there's two levels of justice going now. Our justice department has two different, one for Republicans, one for Democrats. It's very obvious, and this is not justice. God is very angry about this. He's gonna he's allowing some things to come down. It's going to really come down on their head. They think they're getting away with it. Ooh, look how we could do this. We can weaponize the Department of Justice. We can weaponize the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We can weaponize the CIA. We can weaponize, um, we can do this weaponizing of the National Director, of the National Institute of, of, of Information, or NSA, National Society of Administration. Uh, it's our security, National Security Administration. We can weaponize it all. We can turn it against our political, whoever's in power, we can turn all those agencies against our, pol our political enemies, right? That's what's happening. And they're getting called out. Whistleblowers are coming out and saying, yep, that's what's happening. But Jesus warned us about sin. He seriously warned us. He says, abide or remain in me and I also abide and remain in you. No branch can bear fruit. Absolutely in fact, he says, absolutely in fact. This is an absolute negative. I don't know what your, uh, if your Bible even brings this out, but it's an absolute negative. No branch absolutely can bear fruit by itself. It's not produce fruit. Bear means or carry. We just hold on to it, right? It must remain in the vine. It must remain in the vine. It must meno remain connected in the vine. That's what it means. It must remain. Can't happen. Neither can you bear fruit unless you meno remain connected. So he's talking about vines, you know. But then he says, you are the branches, and I am the vine. So you can't do this unless you remain connected in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you, meadow, remain connected in me, and I in you, you shall indeed bear much fruit. But apart from me, and that bear is carry, but apart from me, you can do absolutely, in fact, no thing. That's that negative again, that absolute negative. No thing. So we would say nothing, but they, they emphasize it, no thing. Paul also warns, you see. Jesus warned this. Now Paul's going to warn us. Whatever does not proceed, right? Whatever does not proceed from trusting, relying faith, right? Trusting, relying faith. If it does not come from trusting, relying faith, that's the word pistis, which is in context, in Christ, is said, right? 
Now, Peter also reminds us. So we got a lot of people remind, reminding us, you know, hey, you want to know what sin is? Christians already born because of trust and relying faith. There's a link for this. They're born because of trusting relying faith. That they were given exceedingly, right? That they were given, they had trusting and relying, that they had this faith. That they were given exceedingly great and precious promises that through the realizing channel of these, he says... you might become koinonia partakers of the divine nature. And it's our choice. So it's our choice. We have to make a cho choice. We always have to make a choice. So it's might. It has that. If this is a possibility, right? And how is this? By definitively holy. Just get it down. This is the heiress. Just get it done. I'm not talking about how long it takes. You need to routinely, habitually, Escaping the corruption that is in the world, in, by, or with, because of lust. This is what you need to be partakers of the divine nature. Right? And what does that do? Okay, so that is second. That is, uh, what is that? That is B. 2 Peter 1 4. 2 Peter 1 4. Let's see. 2 Peter 1 4. He's talking, okay, having escaped <coughs> the world because of the, 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 the decay of the world because of its desire, its lusts. And so. Eris participle, definitively holy. Oh, he's talking about who these are. The, who are these partakers? They are the ones having escaped. Yes, plural. The ones, that's the plural, having definitively holy and routinely, habitually, Right? Definitively holy. Oh, oh, no, it's just having already. That's what I'm sorry. Already. Sorry. It's, it's duh. It's Eris. It's already. Routinely, right? They already did this. Uh, already, routinely, habitually escaping the corruption that is in the world. That is in by or with. Yeah. In by or with or by the means. It should really. By the means. Or a cup of lust. So this is the corruption by the means of lust. So that's what has corrupted the world is this lust. In other words, he's saying, God has given us a toolkit to use to stay in fellowship with God. Through trusting, relying faith in Christ to abide. You know, he's given us a toolkit. To remain connected to in Christ. To remain connected in Christ, right? To remain connected to in Christ. So he's given us a toolkit. They've been given uh, already because of trusting or reflect that they have been given that they. That they were given. Yes, that's what he's saying. These Christians have been given precious, great, right? Exceedingly great and precious promises. <coughs> that through the realizing channel of them, these, right? You might become koinonia partakers of the divine nature. So we have a toolkit, right? to use to stay in fellowship with God. So we should really look at that. The Lord told me in a vision that they uh, this that 
to go. Oh, he told me in a vision to go to him. Oh, oh, this going to him regularly in prosuka uh, prayer for intimate fellow. Oh, so he was telling me what this is. He told me in a vision that this is to go, this toolkit is to go to him regularly in prosuke conversational prayer for intimate fellowship. That's, that's what the divine promises are all about. This is where we are transformed into his likeness. And there's verses for this. You know, you can go look at all these verses. And uh, I'm just making a note to myself. So let's look at, as Christian musicians, this is my reflection. How do we take all this in? How do we take all this in? How do we apply it? So as Christian musicians, how is our playing, right? How is our playing going to express fellowship with God's people in worship services if we really don't have <laughs> intimate fellowship with God? Right? How is it going to express this? If we are at war with some Christians, how can we say that we love God when we hate his children? Hate comes from the devil. And, uh, you know, there's people in churches doing all kinds of things. The closer we fellowship with God, the more of the Spirit's unity of peace, right? That is part, it is a, that is a flavor of the singular fruit of unconditional love. We will naturally have. We're going to supernaturally have it, right? We're going to supernaturally, we're going to supernaturally have this. However, not all the vision is wrong. The spirit is constantly dividing between the genuine and the fake. Right? Jesus' very coming was intended to separate the goats from the sheep. Right? On judgment day, left and right. Goats on the left, sheep on the right. Sin causes us to excuse, right, deny or run from the truth about a relationship with a holy God. So that that is a truth. Sin causes us to excuse, <coughs> right, <coughs> deny. People just get our denial or run. One went well from the truth. What is the truth? The truth of Jesus Christ. And that truth is all about a relationship with a holy God. That's what it was. When we break from the genuine, full, experiential relationship, right, epigonosis knowledge, of God and settle for anything less. God gives us over to a depraved mind that leads to sinful actions. The law of commandments just throws gas onto the fire. So if you think you're going to just try harder, <laughs> good luck. Just throws gas on the fire. We look if when we, we look for Zoe Gen life in all the wrong places. If we look, I should say, if we look for Zoe genuine life in all the wrong places, all right, this leads us, this only leads us to death. Like I lived in the bars for 15 years. I was so empty. 
was so empty. I was looking for something exciting. Trying harder to obey only entrenches the sin. Okay? It only entrenches the sin. That's all it does. The work of Christ... The work of Christ to destroy the works of the devil proves, right, that we are God's children. In us. See, in us. He does it. He's destroying this in us. It proves we are God's children. The only way to continue producing fruit is to continue abiding or remaining in the vine. Of Christ. That's the only way that we can continue not producing. He produces fruit. He's the one who produces bearing or carrying fruit it is to continue <coughs> abiding or remaining ongoingly. We must ongoingly, right? We must, is to ongoingly abide or remain. That's the only thing we can do. We must remain connected. A branch remaining connected to or in the vine. Right? So this is how we are in Christ. We remain connected to Him. The only way to escape the condemnation of the world because of lust, the only way is to continue Right? Ongoingly be partakers of the divine nature. Is that what we saw? Is that what he said? To ongoingly, to routinely, routinely, habitually. That's even a more powerful. <laughs> get it done. Just, just get it done. Routinely being partakers of the divine nature through... The promise of the Holy Spirit. This continual fellowship depends, and this is the key, it depends on, right, regular conversational prayer as with every relationship, right? Right? It, it requires a conversation, regular conversation, right? Just as every love relationship requires regular conversation. So nothing strange about this. This is just the way relationship works. Right? Every love relationship, if you love somebody, you're going to have you're going to have a relationship with them. You're going to have um, conversations with them regularly. You know, that's just the way it is, right? Don't kid yourself. God's no different. So that's what I got out of this. And, and maybe you got something else. So let's talk about that down in the comments section, right? So that's where we can diacresis. It says we are all weighing in together, going back and forth, judging or critiquing what we're all learning so we can all learn together and all be encouraged together. That's what it says. 1 Corinthians uh, 14, maybe 31, 29, somewhere in there. Well, God bless you. I look forward to that so we can all uh, be inspired, motivated, encouraged, and that's what this website's all about. All right? God bless you. Look forward to that.